believed that they are currently working on a Doctor Who spin-off with UNIT headed by Kate Stewart. I think this is kind of at least a very well-educated guess. It's, in terms of writers, if she's up for it, she would be really good for this because... This is going to be a little bit different from what I normally post. I'm basically experimenting with trying to start my own solo podcast, or at least it's going to be solo for now. We'll see what happens in the future. But basically, I've realized recently I've been posting a lot of really short videos that are like two minutes long, and I'd rather focus on my main videos that are the like actually highly edited ones that I put a lot of work into to actually be like a bit longer than just like two minutes where I just talk about one thing. And so I thought I'll experiment with talking about those kind of things in one one podcast like a few of them all together in one kind of podcast format if you're watching this on youtube there is still going to be like a bit of editing and pictures and graphics coming up but i'm also going to experiment with probably putting this on some podcast platforms which if i end up doing that i will put those in the description i'll try to remember to put those in the description of like my normal videos as well and obviously as you can tell from like the start of the video and the title and thumbnail if you're watching on youtube this is mostly going to be about the unit spin-off but before I get into that, I first want to talk about a few other things because obviously, like I said, I'm going to go over a few things in this uh, podcast. So I'm basically going to be going over like a few things that have happened like throughout the past month or, or, or so. I don't plan on doing the, this podcast like on a very regular schedule or like weekly or anything. It's more just like whenever I feel like it or whenever I've got like few topics that I kind of don't want to put into their own individual videos because they're not they wouldn't be long enough but I kind of still want to get into them and my opinion on them and talk about them and I'll also probably try and do like initial reviews or something on this format before I make like a fully like edited review if I can anyway that's like the idea if not then I'll just focus on the actual edited reviews but if I get a chance to like do a review before uh, getting around to doing that an initial review and I get time to record one of those then I'll probably do that when it gets around to the 60th anniversary I might try and do like a, re a review podcast for each episode that comes out or maybe just all of them in one podcast and we'll see we'll see how that goes when it comes around to it but for now it's going to just kind of be discussions of like news and things like that so before I get into the main topic of this podcast which is the unit spin-off and my thoughts on it I first want to talk about um quickly the red nose day special or i guess sketch that happened uh during red nose day because that's something that's kind of notable that's happened fairly recently in doctor who now i feel like a lot of people were maybe expecting quite a lot the, more of what than what we got in the special well in the episode in the in the event which you know i was i was possibly thinking that maybe there'd be like a, a possibility of maybe like a trailer or they play like a quick scene or a even more specially filmed like sketch that's you know maybe like set in like the TARDIS or or connects somehow to the final regeneration scene of Power of the Doctor or something but I wasn't like gonna get, get my hopes up and expect so much so I wasn't really let down by it but it was definitely like less than I was expecting that we'd get but I, I still I'm still happy with what we got it was it was still like a really fun fun sketch and I think at the end of the day what it really comes down to is I don't think Russell was like desperately trying to make sure they get Doctor Who in Red Nose Day again like they used to do for quite a lot of uh, Red Nose Days back in the day I think it's more just a coincidence that you know David Tennant was already hosting Red Nose Day or Comic Relief or whatever and so they thought oh well we can we can do a funny quick sketch here where you know Lenny Henry regenerates into David Tennant and then David Tennant is hosting the show from that point on which I, th I think that's kind of all the thought that went into it i don't think they were like oh what doctor who sketch can we put in here i think it was more like oh david tennant's gonna be hosting so we might as well make use of him and the fact that he's the current doctor to do a little doctor who sketch and i think it was fun what we got it was it was quite a fun idea some nice little uh surprisingly good regeneration effects for a little red nose day sketch and they also used I, I don't think it's like this on the youtube version but they did also use the regeneration music from the power of the doctor which was quite a nice uh, little reference so i like i did like what we got but um one other thing before we get on to the main topic of this podcast because it is quite a big news event at the moment and a big discussion is the doomsday announcement uh, Doctor Who Doomsday, the multimedia event, um, because there's obviously been quite a lot of uh, divisive discourse, to say the least, on this uh, topic. Now, I, for one, I'm not really that bothered about this. Um, I think some people have severely overreacted to this, which I'll probably get into later, actually, because I, I probably should explain what it is first, just in case some people are not aware of it. But basically, uh, a few days ago, there was... A video posted of a ticking clock uh, teasing for something to be announced the next day immediately a lot of people kind of thought that it was going to be something 
related to like the 2023 specials the 60th anniversary specials because they don't normally tease like announcements in advance for like you know audios and stuff like that and to be fair this this isn't just an audio so it it kind of makes a little bit of sense that it was a bit more of an announcement because you know with big finish they just kind of drop announcements and this isn't just a big finish thing like big finish are involved i'm pretty sure maybe it's bbc sounds involved i can't remember but i think it's big finish so it is more than just a big finish so i kind of get that the announcement why it was a little bit different to just a normal big finish because it is more than that but it did kind of get people a little bit too excited because they immediately assumed you know it was going to be something for like the 2023 specials for the 60th anniversary or something so i do get that but immediately like when i saw the before they actually did the real announcement and they did the little teaser i did like you know look in the replies on twitter and some people were immediately like yeah i think this is like an audio thing or or whatever so i didn't have my hopes too high because some people kind of figured out what it was already but then when the announcement actually came uh it was through this video of the main actress uh suze kemper i believe it is who i'd not actually heard of before before this um on a green screen and they're kind of you know, appear to be not much of a budget going into this particular marketing, which I'll also get into later. And it was announced that it was basically uh, another one of these um, multimedia, transmedia um, events like uh, Time Lord Victorious a couple of years ago, which personally is something I haven't got into like even at all. I've not even listened to or experienced any of the media from Time Lord Victorious at all yet. Like I, I know of it, and I knew what it was before even uh, Doomsday was announced, but I'd seen stuff about, but I just never dove into it. I'm not like a big, um, big Finnish guy or even that much in the expanded universe at all. Besides, you know, maybe like spin-off shows besides Class, which I did try and start at the time, but uh, never finished. But besides like Torchwood and Surgeon Adventures and stuff, I don't get that deep into the expanded media. I've tried to get into Big Finish before and I just don't think it's my thing. I don't think I have the attention to just have you know, audio that I need to listen to in the background. Um, so it, it just really isn't my thing. And I think that that's kind of what it comes down to. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, when this Doomsday uh, multimedia event kind of releases, there probably won't be much um, that I'll be interested in. I probably won't really check any of it out unless, you know, one of the particular things seems really interesting or it's a particular like media uh, or like medium that I would kind of want to to dive into. Um, I know there's like games that are going to be part of it. So maybe if some of the games look interesting, I'll kind of jump into that. But like I said, um, I didn't I didn't dive into any of Time Love Victorious and I don't know if I'll uh, dive into this. Um, the concept of like the story sounds really interesting. And I think the idea is that um, because it's set over a period of 24 hours, there's going to be 24 different kind of uh, stories or whatever um, told in all these different mediums, which... Sounds like a really interesting idea, but like I say, it depends if any of them actually like kind of call to me or not, whether I'm going to actually listen to any of them. But back to the actual uh, announcement trailer itself, you know, there's been some kind of crazy reactions to it because like I said, the budget clearly wasn't that big for this particular announcement trailer. And it's kind of led people to go a little bit crazy and immediately start hating on it um, just from an announcement. Like this isn't really that reflective of, of what the actual like quality of the the content itself is going to be i don't think i don't think we can really judge that by now from this one green screen announcement clip and i think a lot of people probably are are more angry because they were expecting it to be something else related to like the actual the actual show like the the actual episodes that are coming out this year and then it wasn't and so now they're kind of directing the fact that this teaser kind of was low budget to kind of be like saying that it's going to be bad because they were already a little bit angry because they expected it to be more than than what it was you know it's like i've seen some people being like wow this did disney budget's really going very well then if this is they're kind of taking it as like an indication of what the show and the quality of the show and the production values of the show is going to be under disney which is kind of ridiculous and insane because i don't think disney have anything to do with this part you know uh I'm pretty sure Disney and the Disney Plus deal and the money for that, it's it's all just involved in the TV, like, you know, the actual show itself and likely the spin-offs that, that are getting, actually getting made that we are obviously going to get into later. And from what I can tell, Doomsday is kind of taking, it's going over a lot of different, like, mediums, from what I can tell, none of which are TV. So it's everything but TV, which is the only bit that Disney budget is covering. So it's insane that some people are kind of taking this as a sign of what it's going to be like on the Disney and with Disney's budget when this is like all of the stuff that Disney is 
not involved in because there's no TV involved in it at all. So I think that's a little bit insane. Going back to the reactions, some people have taken it like way too far. Fair enough replying to the announcement, kind of saying that they don't think it looks very good. Like, you know, you can still keep that to yourself, really. It would probably be better, but that, that's fair enough. But, you know, messaging the, the actor themselves that's taking part in it, that's only you've only seen them in a minute of footage that's just teasing the actual project itself, and you just kind of tell, telling them that they can't act from just based on that one minute and, you know, just whining about this thing, telling them that they should quit while they're ahead or whatever. It's It's kind of insane. Like... If you if it's not something that you seem interested in and you're like, okay, this looks a bit shit, which like, yeah, from that teaser, the, the quality and the production value is not there, but we don't know what, that that's not probably not the best judge of what the actual uh, quality of the actual content is going to be. But it's like, if that is how you feel about it, just don't check any of it out. Like, don't buy any of it. Don't listen to any of it. Um, just don't take part in any of it. You know, you don't have to like message the actor and go crazy like at the actor themselves like just don't buy it it's, it's as simple as that so some people are absolutely insane and you know touch grass basically <laughs> go outside touch some grass because it's just insane but you know like i said i didn't check out time like victorious um those things aren't really for me and you know you have to spend if you want to go through like basically everything and get the whole story you're gonna have to spend a lot of money i think a lot of the prices for this at least for like the audios and stuff or like maybe it's like an audio book. I think we already like know what some of the prices are. I think for these things, and they don't look cheap. And I already don't buy big finish as it is, um, because it's not something I'm that interested in. So, like I said, unless one of the games kind of looks interesting to me, maybe I'll I'll check that out. But I doubt I'm gonna really get into this anyway. But it's not necessarily just because of the 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 really low budget, low quality teaser. That, that I'm not going to check it out. It's more just, like, even if there was a really good teaser, like the Time of Victorious teaser, I still probably wouldn't check it out because I didn't check out Time of Victorious. But we'll see when it gets to it. I know East Side Games is meant to be involved. I think that's what they're called, which are the, the ones that made uh, Lost in Time, which, even though I barely understand that game, I just can't seem to get off it recently. So I know they're involved, and so they're going to make a game for it, which I have no idea what it's going to be like. But if you check out all of the published games from East Side Games, at least on the App Store, they're all basically the same as uh, Doctor Who Lost in Time, but reskinned for like another show or something. Like there's an Office version, uh, the Office version of it, um, which is just the same game but but reskinned. Um, I know they made an Always Sunny game, which I think that looked slightly different, but it's probably basically the same concept. I think they just kind of work with different like IPs and different shows and basically just reskin the same game. So I don't know how that's going to work out necessarily for Doomsday, unless the idea is that they're not actually going to make a new game for Doomsday, but they might just, you know, they have these kind of uh, different events that pop up in Lost in Time. So maybe it's just they're going to do like a Doomsday event in Lost in Time instead of releasing a whole new game, which I think would probably make more sense. So that's probably like, unless I stop playing the game by then, which I might do, um, that's probably like the only thing I'll check out. But like I said, I barely understand the game and I'm like surprised that I'm still playing it, but I just can't, Whenever I've got a free chance and I don't know what to do, I just get my phone out and I go on Lost, Lost in Time and stop playing it, but I barely understand what, what's going on, to be honest. I'm just, like, pressing buttons and things are happening. I just can't get off of it. So, you know, maybe that's, like, the only part of this I'll check out. It doesn't necessarily seem like something I'll be that interested in. You know, like I said, I didn't check out Time of Victorious, and so it's more just the fact that it's not the kind of thing that I'm interested in. It's not necessarily the fact that the teaser was so low quality. But I do agree with people about the teaser. Like, it was a pretty bad teaser, pretty low quality teaser. Um, But I didn't get myself too overhyped with it because I kind of figured out before the actual big announcement that, you know, this wasn't something for the actual show. Um, And, you know, even even then, not being that, that interested in it, not thinking it looked that good, I didn't, you know, go out of my way to message the people involved and tell them how shit they are you know like it is that's just insane behavior so yeah it's probably not something i'll check out but i thought it's something worth mentioning because it does seem like something that you know people have been talking about quite a bit and i kind of wanted to give my opinion on that okay so now it's time to actually get into the main kind of meat of this uh, podcast that i wanted to talk about you know this was going to be just a video on its own but i realized it would probably be one of those like videos that i've been making recently where they're kind of just like two and a half minutes long if that and it just kind of doesn't seem worth it to me um, to, to just kind of have it in such a short video. So I thought I'll have it as a segment in this. And it's kind of probably, this segment's probably going to be longer than the actual video itself would be because 
that's normally I try and keep those quite concise and like heavily edited only say things that I kind of need to say whereas this is going to be more like a little loose discussion I've not really got like much notes or or plans to to what I'm going to talk about with this it's more just like looking at the announcement and then I'll tell you what I think about it why I think it could work maybe why I think it couldn't work but I, th I don't think there really is any reason why I think it couldn't work but we'll see we'll see when I get to that from like the amount of articles and all of this and some of the details it's kind of all but confirmed at this point like it's believed that they are currently working on a doctor who spin-off with unit headed by kate stewart who is you know the head of unit so there's been a few articles on it but the main thing i'm going to look at here is a tweet by matt or mxtt uh on twitter and i've seen a lot of people like sharing this one so i assume that, that this tweet is like somewhat reliable or at least a very good educated guess if uh if not because a lot of people have been sharing this one around but this is titled rtd2 tidbit number three which reads the unit spin-off is still being written it will be executive produced by rtd but like with torchwood and sja he'll only write crucial episodes including the pilot still likely for winter 2024 after series 14 has aired its episodes minus christmas obviously Quite crucially, the aim is to bring back existing characters that haven't been seen for some time and bringing a certain someone from another corner of the Hooniverse. The most surprising of these is Arissa Magumbo, who will have a significant promotion. There's some details here that I didn't expect to hear and obviously take it with a pinch of salt because they don't really provide a source. They just say like they can't say who the, the, the source is, who the insider is that they've got this info from because they'll risk losing their position and losing their access. But I think this is kind of at least a very well educated guess if 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 not you know actual insider information i think basically the idea is that series 14 is going to be somewhat at like the first half or kind of summerish time or spring probably springtime in 2024 and then this show is going to like tide us over until the next season in 2025 so this is going to be at the end of 2024 uh and i assume before the christmas special but what's interesting here is they say that they're going to bring back existing characters which a lot of people have mostly speculated is going to be Martha because obviously last we'd seen her, or I believe last we'd seen her anyway, she was working for Unit still. But we've at least seen her working for Unit before, so that, that would make sense. And they also, uh, a lot of people also think that Eve Miles will come back in this show as Gwen Cooper, which I really hope is true because I really want to see more Gwen Cooper. You know, one of the things I was thinking before is, you know, they could always bring back Torchwood. And in my in my opinion, like, I know there's some of those insane people out there that are like, Torchwood isn't Torchwood without Jack, which, you know, they're just wrong. Like, I get, I get it. Like, to some people, he may have been seen as, like, the main character and the main reason that you'd watch the show. But realistically, Gwen Cooper was the main character of Torchwood anyway. Like, we saw the whole show through her eyes. Um, You know, Jack was just kind of the the... The connection point between the sh uh, Doctor Who and Torchwood he, you know he wasn't really the main character of the show so I personally could have seen like if they did want to bring Torchwood back without obviously having to bring back John Barrowman because of all the the controversy around that they could have easily brought it back with like Gwen Cooper leading a new team for me personally like a brand new team but you know if they're gonna bring her back for the unit show as well that would also be great I don't know how well she'd work in unit because it's a bit of a different like institution but you know any chance to bring her back i'm happy with she's one of my favorite characters in in the universe definitely a flawed character for sure but that's that's what makes her one of the uh the most interesting characters in the universe in my opinion so that would be cool but then there's also and this is what this is not just like what other people have been speculating but this is in this tweet itself it says arisa magumbo will also be returning which is really interesting i really like to see her because i do think she was really a really good character again a bit of a flawed character um you know just pointing guns at people and telling them to do stuff but she only appeared in i believe two episodes i think it was turn left and planet of the dead i'm pretty sure those are the only ones she appeared in so it'd be great to see her come back because she didn't get much play in like the actual show itself uh and i don't know but i don't think she's appeared in any expanded media at least like audios or anything maybe they've like written books with her in it because she doesn't have to actually show up to do the books but i think that'd be really interesting i i like seeing some you know um lesser known or or not as significant characters from the rtd era coming back would be really interesting instead of just like you know bringing back like rose and stuff like that like the, the main people that everybody thinks of trinity wells is one that people are really hoping is going to come back um which i think will just be a great uh cameo and reference and also like a bit of fan service because it's one of those fan servicey things where it's like it's not like bringing back 
David Tennant as the Doctor, which, you know, they're already doing, but it's not, like, something as big as that. It's it's just Trinity Wells, for those who don't know, it's just, like, the American news reporter that just comes up a lot in the RTD era, and I don't think she's been seen outside of the RTD era, so that's one that would be great to uh, see again. But that's obviously, you know, that's uh, not... Re- I'm going kind of a little bit off topic here. So, you know, I think Ar- Arisa Magumbo is kind of, like, she's kind of the same sort of level as that, where it's, like, a lot of people might not really know exactly who it is if you say that name they're like i don't know exactly who you're on about you know and kind of have to be reminded but another one that isn't hasn't really been mentioned i've seen some people mention it but it's not really been mentioned like seriously that i would like to see if we're bringing back like some minor players from unit is malcolm taylor from also from planet of the dead um because you know he's just he's just like a funny scientist character and it's like they really need like a scientist he would be a great one to put in there especially if they feel like they need comic relief you know if if it is going to be like a serious show which i think chances are it probably will be them you know maybe maybe they might decide not to have him in there or you know you can maybe even like have him be like the character we know like uh, the kind of comic relief but but you could even like focus some stories on him and get to see a serious side see if um who's the, character, the actor is it lee evans uh, yeah, you could kind of have um, Lee Evans come back and see if he can, like, do some, like, really serious acting and do some serious stuff with that character. I think that'd be really interesting to see from a character that we've only seen before doing comic relief. And I do feel like this show is going to be serious, which I, I am going to get into because I have some ideas as, as to what this could be like. But in terms of other characters, like, personally, I would really like to see them actually just create, like, a core team of brand new characters that we've kind of not seen before, like they did with Torchwood. Like, when when Torchwood came out, you know, we, we knew... Captain Jack, and, you know, we, we kind of knew Tosh because she showed up in, uh, w- w- what was it, World War Three Aliens of London, um, but that was just, like, because it happened to be, like, the same actor and they just decided to give her the same name just, just as a little nod. But besides that, like, we were intru- introduced to a brand new team of people we'd never met before, which I think was really a, a really cool idea, really good, and, you know, not everything has to be references to things that we recognise and things that we notice. And so I think they could do the same and should do the same for this um and obviously like the main character like i said for torchwood was a brand new character like we saw it through the eyes of someone who wasn't even part of the, part of the team initially and that could maybe be a route they go down with with this as well although i do think although i want new characters maybe the main character should actually you know still be kate like like you'd expect because i think that would personally work a bit better but maybe we could we could see it through the eyes of a brand new uh, uh unit kind of recruit or whatever um like we did with torchwood but in terms of, you know, if they do need another character that isn't technically like a brand new character, I know there's a character called, I think he's called Sam Bishop in the unit audios, which, like I said, I don't really listen to Big Finish, so I don't know much about him. But, you know, if you if you bring him in as well, like, that could kind of act as a similar sort of thing. Like, most people aren't going to know unless they listen to the audios or they know at least something about him they're not really going to know who he is um so he's going to kind of feel like a new character to general audiences which is good so long as you don't have to like make it seem like we should know who he is already and listen to the big finishes and stuff to understand everything um but then it's also like a nice little reference for people that that kind of know who who he is already from the audios and uh, they can kind of just you know jump on board and they already know who this character is but make it so that it works again for you know new audiences who haven't haven't listened to those audios um you know don't overload it with references you can maybe have some little references to things that that he's done in the past that are like not important to the story and you know some people who have heard the audios will be like oh that's from the audio i recognize that whereas other people will just kind of think oh that's just like a little mission they went on in the past and they're just reminiscing over it you know so that that could be cool but i do really want to see especially with all the characters rtd is bringing back for his era and and all these things I do want to see most of the team or at least some of the team made up of brand new brand new characters that we've never seen before that've never been in the show before. Um and he kind of can be that in a way but he isn't obviously technically a new character. It's just most people aren't really going to know who he is. But I especially want there to be at least some people in the core team that are people that haven't made an appearance before and probably act as that that we don't really know of and haven't made an appearance before like they did with Torchwood when they first did Torchwood. So I think that would be great if they did that. Now, in terms of what the show could be like and, like, the tone of the show, at the moment, like, police procedurals, I think is, like, what they technically are, Um, they're really big in the UK right now. Like, Line of Duty and uh, Happy Valley, stuff like that, have been, like, massive events when they come out. Like, I remember everybody was watching Line of Duty when that came out and trying to make sure they didn't get the show spoiled for them and stuff like that when it came out. I personally haven't seen it, but... 
I remember that being a thing. And then even more recently, a lot of people have been talking about Happy Valley. Um, so I, so they're really big and like massive events in the UK right now. So I could really see like the unit show being like that um, because, you know, those just work really well at the moment. So if this show is definitely being made, um, I think it would be really cool if, if they do basically make it in the format of these kind of police procedurals that are really big in the UK at the moment. But it's set in the Hooniverse and instead of it being, you know, um, humans that they're dealing with or normal, you know, people working for the police that are, 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 are like corrupt and dealing with corruption, which I think is what Line of Duty is about. It, it can be focused on aliens. So, you know, if they do, it's normally about them like dealing with some human criminals in these police procedurals. Do that, but, you know, instead it's like aliens that they're dealing with and it's kind of all... Uh, uh, stuff that the general public kind of don't really know about and don't really don't really see um and then if it's if they kind of want to go down like the corruption route like they do with like line of duty and stuff you could have it where it's like the slavine or the shoal of the winter harmony harmony shoal whatever it's called infiltrating infiltrating like their the infiltrating unit and kind of making it corrupt um because you know those are aliens that can like disguise themselves as humans and so it's not really as easy to tell um or even maybe just have like some humans that are working for unit um kind of being told what to do by by and working for some some alien organization or something uh, if you want to go down that corruption route so i think basically making it like a police procedural but set in the universe would be a really cool idea and i'm sure if if that if this is definitely a show that they're doing that i'm sure that's something they're thinking about because i can't see like many other ways to do it unless you basically just do torchwood again but it's a unit instead of torchwood which is still a similar idea but it's not really a police procedural so i think that would be really cool now obviously they said russell's going to be basically executive producing and i don't know if they said show running i think they just said exec executive producing uh writing the crucial episodes but in terms of writers you know i remember a while ago before rtd got announced and people were trying to figure out who the next like doctor who showrunner was people were thinking sally wainwright who wrote happy valley which we were just talking about and um, one of the police procedurals um they thought that she was going to be uh or could possibly be one of one of uh or, or the next showrunner for doctor who before russell got announced you know if she's up for it um she would be really good for this because you know she did happy valley which is a police procedural and so she, she knows how to write those things and all she has to do is make it set in the universe and you know have aliens involved somehow and i think she could do something really interesting with that this is probably quite far reaching but it's maybe it's possible you know when those rumors were about that like the reason those rumors were about it, it could be that maybe people were kind of they then they knew that she was going to be involved in doctor who somehow but they assumed it must have been as the showrunner for the main show or something like that when really she might have been already been in talks for doing this unit spin-off um now i do think that's quite unlikely it's probably just a coincidence that people were you know people just knew that she was a big showrunner at the time uh in in uk tv um and that's probably why they were bringing her up because at that point you know russell hadn't even been announced at that point and he might not have even been in talks to to join the show again yet uh come back to the show so i think it's very unlikely that they were already then thinking of you know a unit spin-off and who they could get to write a unit spin-off but it it's always the possibility or you know maybe they did have talks with her to to be the showrunner of doctor who and she she didn't want to do it she she declined it maybe she said oh if you want to do like a unit spin-off um one time i'll be i'll be down to write that because that's that's up my alley you know maybe those rumors didn't come out of nowhere and could could somehow be linked to this and could kind of back up the claim that, that you know maybe she could be coming in to write this but you know that's just like take that with a pinch of salt that's just kind of like a stab in the dark really uh, and i'm just kind of speculating there but you know even if that isn't the case i do think she would be a great choice uh, to write this because if they're wanting to tap into those police procedurals that are, are really popular right now you know she knows how to do that and she she clearly does it really well because she's written some of the the biggest ones uh, and some of the biggest shows in the uk at the moment you know it's possible i, I don't know but it's possible but I, I feel like more people are probably watching the new series of happy valley than than the current series of doctor who who knows um i haven't really been looking at that that stuff i'm not a, a, a figures guy really so it would be a great get if if they could get her to come in and write write the unit show you know like they said russell's writing the crucial episodes if this is true and he's going to be the executive producer you know there's probably going to be a few other writers writing the episodes although i assume it's only going to be around like six to eight episodes long because the, the main show itself is only going to be eight, eight episodes a season so it's not going to be more than that surely but you know maybe she writes most of them or maybe it is literally just a split between rtd and her and 
he's kind of you know uh, setting her up to be to basically run it herself if if it carries on for more seasons like uh, he did with Chibnall with Torchwood. So, but like I said, she might not even be involved at all. But if she is, that would be like the perfect choice. That would work really well, um, and I think that would be really good because it's it's the exact you know it's the genre she's already like perfected and been working in really well and doing some really great TV from what I can tell um, without having watched it. And so all she has to do is you know. Uh, combine that with science fiction which you know i i don't think she's written before and she might have even said you know she's not really very comfortable when you know when those those uh rumors of her writing being the showrunner for Doctor who are coming out she might have even i might remember her even saying she wasn't that comfortable with with writing science fiction and so that's probably why she didn't take on the show maybe she'd be more comfortable making you know a sci-fi version of the kind of show she already writes and and that could convince her to come on board and that might be that might be exactly what happened. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about with the unit spinoff, and I almost forgot this, to go on a little tangent to kind of set this up, and I, I promise this is connected in some way. The Torchwood theme is one of my favorite pieces of music in the Hooniverse. I might even like it more than any of the actual Doctor Who themes. It's an absolute banger. <laughs> I just like to listen to it sometimes it's really good those of you who might not know the torchwood theme you know it showed up before the show itself the spin-off show actually launched in some way it was a bit of a different version but it showed up when you know torchwood showed up in series two that was the first instance of well i believe the first instance of the torchwood theme um you know it, it was the same sort of melody and stuff but they kind of reworked it a little bit to turn it into the theme song when the actual show itself launched that score was already like perfect for being a theme for the show and all they had to do was kind of rework it slightly and it turned into one of the best pieces of music in Doctor Who and it's just a great theme. As well in the RTD era when uh, Murray Gold was composer or the theme that played when Unit always turned up it's also a great theme and honestly uh, someone that I'm subscribed to on YouTube I, I think it's the Beast of Trenzalore but I'll, I'll correct myself if that's wrong. They posted their own version of what they think that the unit theme could sound like, the, the title sequence theme, um, which is basically the Murray Gold unit theme from when units show up in RTD. I really hope they use the already existing unit theme because it's just like perfect title sequence music and it'll be so good. Just like the same as what they did for Torchwood when you know they needed tile, se tile sequence music for Torchwood and they just used the Torchwood theme um, but made it better. When I heard that on, on that, that channel, um, I was like, this is perfect. They've already got a title sequence, like title sequence music set up, a theme song set up, which is just great. You know, even if it's not Murray Gold that returns for, for Doctor Who and for these spin-offs and whatever to make the music, I'm sure they're allowed to, like, use the melody or ask permission for for him, use that uh, arrangement. And I really hope they do that because it's perfect for title sequence music. And, yeah, I think that's basically all I have to say about the unit spin-off. So, you know, if, if I missed anything about it, you know, let me know. And if there's anything about it that you... If there's anything you want to see from, like, the unit spin-off... Any ideas you have to how it could work, who you think you could write it, who you think could be in it, let me know in the comments. Uh, I might discuss them again in another follow-up podcast or a video or something if there's some good ideas in there. So let me know what you think about the unit spin-off. And, you know, let me know if you think it's definitely happening in the first place or if you think these kind of rumors have kind of been blown out of proportion a little bit and it it's, might not actually be a thing that's happening because it's not been confirmed yet. Now, there is also... It's been rumoured that the Monsters spin-off that's meant to be happening, which I think is meant to be like an anthology of, you know, different monsters. I've heard somebody, somewhere that that's meant to be like um, an animated show, which sounds about right. That that makes sense to me, but I don't know where that's actually come from. I haven't uh, looked for the source on that. But if there is one, I'll, I'll put it, you know, on the video version on YouTube or in, in the links. Well, I think that just makes sense. That's that would be really good, and I'm excited to see uh, that as well. If that if that show is definitely going to be a thing, it sounds very interesting and very new. Um, because you know the unit spinoff sounds very similar to something like Torchwood that we've seen before, whereas this sounds, especially if it's an animated one, sounds very unique and new. We we need more new stuff, especially with all the old stuff that RTD is bringing back. It'd be nice to see something new, so that'd be good. But we've also heard from Chibnall in the Radio Free Scaro interview recently. Uh, he also said that he wanted to do spin-offs. You know, maybe we could have got like a Fugitive Doctor spin-off or or Division or something like that. You know, he wanted to do spin-offs, um, but the budget just didn't 
didn't allow for it. And so that's interesting to hear about. Uh, it would have been interesting to to see what those would be. Maybe one one day we'll hear about what those would have been, but I, I doubt that. But in that same interview, he also talked about how Flux uh, was almost cancelled because of the, the restrictions with COVID and rescheduling and stuff like that. And that was just a, a really interesting thing to hear about uh, during that interview. And I've actually made a whole video about that. It was the last video I posted on my channel, one of those short uh, two and a half uh, minute videos that I'm gonna try and <laughs> stop making. So if you wanna hear more about that, um, you can check that out. And if you're watching this or listening to this on the YouTube version, I'll put that on the end screen now for you to click. But yeah, let me know what you think of this new format this new podcast and any of the things I've discussed. And thanks for watching or listening.